Okay, so once you have your Linux install um, in place and you have it up and running, you can bring up a web browser and now we need to put the software in place. So under the menu by default, at least with Linux Mint, you get Firefox. Uh, Ubuntu will have the same, it will look a little bit different. And we have a nice option here for bringing up a terminal. And so just as we've seen in the other videos, you can look at, at this stuff. If you are in a situation where you need to connect to some other machine, uh, and especially if you need X forwarding, and for example, for my classes, as soon as we start doing GUIs, that will be significant, which is part of why I'm making this video. Uh, then you can you, know, you can use SSH. It's already there. It's installed. And this hyphen capital Y option is what tells it to allow you to uh, is what tells it to allow you to pop up windows. So right now if I were to run something let's pick something silly like gedit. <clears throat> now granted I am using a reasonably slow uh, connection to the computer that this is running on so I wouldn't want to do this most time but I was able to run this it's actually running on a different computer and it's just sending me the graphical terminal. It's one of the beautiful things about the X Windows and Linux system. But you also probably want to have some uh, of this installed on your own machine. And so I want to run you through installing both Java and Scala uh, and setting up environment variables for them because I think that is significant for you to do. Um, for Java, which is what you should get first, go to oracle.com and under downloads they have Java for developers. And you should go ahead and pull down whatever the most recent version of the JDK is. You're not interested right now in the JRE. For our purposes you want the, JD, the JDK, which is the Java uh, Developers Kit. This has all of the things that you need for actually writing programs and that's useful for when you're trying to write your uh, your Scala programs as well. So you download this, you'll have to agree to a license and then click. And I went ahead and I downloaded the 64-bit tar gz file and you'll see that in just just a minute. It takes a while to download so I didn't want to do it during the video. The other thing that you want to download is you want to go to scalalang.org and download Scala and pick the most recent release of this. Uh, so there, there is a 2.10 that is currently in progress, but it is still a milestone at the time when I'm, develop, when I'm making this video. So 2.92 uh, will work just fine. I should note the textbook is written for 2.9 and revisions have to be made for 2.10. So uh, it's possible you might even want, if you're if you want things to, to be as close to the textbook as possible, you might consider sticking with 2.9. Uh, uh, we'll have to say, I haven't had experience with seeing how much stuff from the book is going to change in 2.10. Um, so I downloaded both of those and they went to my downloads directory and of course this is a brand new install because we just installed it so that's all that's there. So I'm going to move those into this directory and they are both gzipped tarballs and so to open those up I'm going to run tar and I'm going to give it the command xzf the x is for extract a tarball the z is it has been zipped with gzip and the f says that we're pulling it from a file and then I can give it the name of the file and now if you look there is an extra directory here, JDK 1.7, etc, etc, etc. And we can do the same for the Scala. Okay, and now I have Scala 2.9.2. Um, technically at this point, let's, let's actually, let's run Scala 2.9.2 bin Scala 
This is working, however, it's using the version of Java that came with the machine, or that came with this, uh, this Linux install. Feel free to run with this. It's the OpenJDK, it's 1.6 um, update 24. So, that's interesting. Ignore. Well, maybe I should have given it a larger partition. Um, the, uh, this will inevitably work fine for you. I kind of prefer to have the, uh, the official version of Java. I find that it, it often performs a little bit better. And so, So one of the things you might have noticed here is that in order to run Scala, I had to give the full path for it. And that's kind of a pain. It's nice to um, to have it so that you can uh, get to these things immediately. And so for that, we can add a few lines to our dot, uh, let me remember, it's one point. 7007. Actually, let's just go ahead and open another window. There we go. Now we can see what we're doing. So there's a file, a .bashrc file, which gets run every time that you uh, start up a, a terminal. And you can um, put a few commands in here so that I don't spend time retyping them. I'm actually going to copy these over. Oh, yes. Well, that's interesting. Why is that? Unless, of course. Yep. Okay, well. And I have standard VI. This is actually something that my students have asked about. Under Mint Linux, okay, so it doesn't come by default with uh, Vim. However, it gives you instructions for getting it. sudo apt-get install Vim, and it will ask you for your password. Yes, I want to install it. And this way you can uh, have the have the Vim editor instead of just the VI editor. Uh, Vim really is easier to move around in. So let's go ahead and while I'm over here, I'll just go ahead and use VI for the dot bash RC. And I want to tell the system a number of different things. I want to tell it what Java command I want it to use. Okay, this is something that Scala will look up uh, when it runs uh, Java. And so I'm going to give it home. You'll give it your username. And then, of course, we just installed this in 1.7.0 underscore 07. And the Java command itself is bin Java. I want to tell it where Java is located. Java home, which is similar. Home. M. Lewis, these, as you can tell, I'm very used to Vim. So JDK is lowercase there. JDK 1.7.0 underscore 07. That is the, the home for Java. We have a Scala home as well that I would like to set. And home M. Lewis. And I believe, let's just check real fast. There we go. Uh, this was just Scala 292. Scala and hyphen 2.9.2. Um, to make it so I can run Scala from anywhere, I'm going to set up an alias for Scala. 
and that alias is going to make it so that when I type in Scala, I get this command. Okay. And it'll come in handy later to also have the Scala compiler in there. Um, and at least the way I have things set up on my system, I add the uh, Java home to the path. Or actually, I'd, or I add the Java home's bin directory to the path. So let's just go with home. MLOS JDK 1.7.007 slash bin and I want to add that onto the dollar path. Now, every time that I open, so if I exit that terminal and I create a new one, now when I run this, you'll see that I got that. I'm still using their old uh, version. I have to go look into to that, but I'm perfectly happy with that right now uh, for this setup. So um, now you'll be able to run Scala. You'll be able to run Scala C in here uh, for compiling. Wow path occurs many, many times in this. That's the issue that our path wasn't updated from that. Uh, something to look into. Um, so if you follow these instructions, you'll be able to run Scala on your machine. Uh, I now do have Vim installed. And you can add what, whatever other software uh, you want into the mix. So this should hopefully get you up and running. You'll be able to SSH, you'll be able to run Scala locally. Uh, you can also do an SCP when you want to move files around. And this will work even if the uh, you can't pull down the disk image that, that I made and work with that.